Oftentimes in entertainment, those who worked hard and made a name for themselves in the business get overlooked, as if they had very little part in influencing the current generation. Some established legends didn't get the flowers they deserve before they passed away, and unfortunately some were even disrespected while they were still with us. We've heard many Hollywood stories that feature producers and executives on the wrong side of history. Red Fox is a comedian's name that isn't mentioned as much as his peers in the industry, but his impact on the genre cannot be understated. Red Fox was born in December of 1922, and even though Fox is a legend in the eyes of many, it's unfortunate that the Hollywood executives that worked with him didn't see it that way. Here's why Hollywood disrespected Red Fox. In 1991, Eddie Murphy would create the CBS sitcom The Royal Family, stemming from the behind-the-scenes chemistry of the set of Harlem Nights. His original goal was to reintroduce Red Fox to primetime television, his first series in five years. In his prime, the St. Louis Red comedian would dominate TV during the early 70s with the hit show Sanford and Son starring Damon Wilson and Fox himself, as it would peak to the number two spot in the Nielsen ratings. Now, despite having a proven track record with the series Sanford and Son and being an act who shared the screen with the likes of Richard Pryor and Murphy, network executives and producers connected to the show still felt the need to micromanage everything that went on during the filming. Actress Della Reese, who portrayed Fox's wife on The Royal Family, spoke on how many of the white producers had the mindset of, I know a lot about black people, I have a lot of black friends. In an interview with the Television Academy, Reese revealed several behind the scenes stories involving herself and Red Fox on set of The Royal Family. According to Reese, Red was in a constant fight with some of the show's producers who wanted to retain control over the series. He was always trying to tell Red how to be funny. That is so stupid. And he approaches it with, I'm one of the producers and I can tell you how to be funny if I want to. And Red was saying, you don't even know funny. You can't tell me something you don't even know. As the interview would go on, Reese would then tell the story of how the disrespect towards Red would eventually collide with the ending of his life. Reese said that during rehearsals for one episode, Fox was required to walk behind her while she was sitting in a chair on set in the kitchen. Red was not present at the time due to a previously scheduled interview with Entertainment Tonight. Instead of using Fox for the rehearsal, a body double was used. For some reason, the producer did not like the use of a body double and wanted to use Fox for the scene, despite Fox not having any lines. According to Reese, anyone could have walked behind her for the rehearsal. Even though anyone could have walked behind Reese, because they didn't have any lines, the producer walked over to the Entertainment Tonight set and got Red to return to the set of the Royal Family. Once Fox found out he didn't have any lines in the scene and all he had to do was walk behind Reese, he became livid. According to Reese, shortly after, he fell to the ground in pain. At first, the cast and crew thought Red was doing a pratfall, something he was known for. However, when Red told Della to call his wife, that's when she knew it was serious. That day on October 11th in 1992 would be the last time Fox would be on a Hollywood set as he would later be pronounced dead at the age of 68. According to the Desert News, Lewis Pittman, who was Fox's accountant then, said the actor died at 7.45 p.m. at Queens of Angels Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center. Fox collapsed on the set of the CBS television series on the Paramount Studios lot at 5555 West Melrose Avenue in Hollywood shortly after 4 p.m. If Fox was unconscious and in extremely critical condition with acute myocardial infarction, a heart attack. When he reached the emergency room, a hospital spokeswoman said. In that same interview for the Television Academy, Reese would reveal what happened soon after producers found out that Fox had passed away. The doctor comes out and says, uh, Mrs. Fox, we've done all that we can do, and your husband is gone. Standing uh, this close were two of the producers, and they said, what are we going to do with the script? She's sitting right here. They just told her that her husband was dead, and I went crazy. I went absolutely insane and uh, got in my car and left. And I made up my mind in that car on the way home that I wasn't ever gonna do television that way again. They never treated him with the respect that he should have had. He should have had a writer on the show. Instead, they stuck Jack A in there. And she's a wonderful comedian. 
but that was not the time nor the place for her to be. They just got her and sat her in there. He never got the treatment he needed. He was not phased out of it. He didn't get an accident or didn't get sick or something. He was no longer in it. One day he was there and one day he wasn't. Unfortunately, Hollywood producers immediately thinking of their own productions as opposed to the well-being of their talent they hired is a common occurrence in the show business. If you guys remember, just not too long ago, Jamie Foxx suffered a medical emergency that left him hospitalized for several weeks. Jamie was in the middle of filming a new Netflix film back in action in Atlanta. Less than a week after his hospitalization, TMZ reported that filming of the movie would continue without Fox. Instead, a body double was hired to complete Jamie's remaining scenes in the movie. When news became public that the production was moving on without him, it didn't sit well with fans, who criticized Netflix for caring about money over the health of their star. One user would say, Jamie Foxx had a stroke and eight days left to film a movie he was working on. Instead of waiting until he was well, they used a stunt double to finish the job. Moral of the story is, take some days off to spend with your family because your job is going to move on without you. Another user would go on to express a similar sentiment. Imagine you're Jamie Foxx and you got eight days left to finish shooting a movie and you have a stroke. The director decided to use a stunt double to replace you versus waiting for you to get well. Moral of the story, take needed time to make sure you're good because they're moving on without you. Despite these disheartening stories, some have empathized with companies that have invested money into projects and the potential loss of their original investment. Even though both sides are heard, there must be a middle ground that companies can fall back on in order to make themselves not seem so heartless. You see, Hollywood has a long history of exploiting their artists for monetary gain, while never considering the feelings, emotions, and mental health of them. Even though they might treat our legends any type of way, it's important to preserve the legacy of those who walked before for us. Even when he was here, it appeared that Fox knew he couldn't rely on Hollywood to give him nor his friends a respect. In fact, he would take his respect back by launching the Red Fox Walk of Fame at his office of Red Fox Productions, where he and several of his Hollywood friends, including LaWanda Page, would place their footprints in cement and sign their names back in the late 80s. Original prints from back then can reportedly still be seen today. This year marks Fox's 100th birthday. It's up to us to pay homage to our legends. Hello, this is Dave Chappelle. I'm here in Atlanta wishing a comedy legend a very happy 100th birthday. Man, I wish you were here so that I could see you again and you could see me for the first time. <laughs> I'm sure we would have hit it off. Much love to you, Red Fox. May your legacy continue forever.